Herb Cohen. I wanted to talk today about self-healing and the amazing opportunities that are right in front of our eyes that we're not seeing. So when I worked um, as a, uh, a young therapist in an agency, there were uh, one after another pharmacy reps eager to be uh, eager to do presentations with PowerPoints about the pharmacology that they were selling, usually around antipsychotics or antidepressants. And what always interested me was they were always like 10-week controlled studies in patient. And um, they always had to do twice better than placebo in order to get an FDA indication, as most medications, that's FDA rules. So, so what was interesting is that every single study had a placebo um, action taking place. So 30% of the recipients would remit their symptoms through uh, the actions of placebo only, as opposed to 60% or better by the pharmacology that was being tested. So, um, so statistically, they were able to show, let's say for depression, um, that twice the amount of recipients in a double-blind study uh, uh, did better than uh, those having a placebo effect, where they also remitted their depression. I asked questions like, well, um, what happened after they were discharged? Did they continue to remit their depression? And they said, well, that's not part of the study because the study was uh, set up to eliminate variables like what people ate, what people drank, they could be doing drugs, they could be having all kinds of variables. And I said, well, I said if people lived home where they were abused or treated badly, they would get depressed. And I said, um, that would be a cause of depression. And if you put me in a hotel with nice food and no responsibility after 10 weeks, I might start to feel less depressed. I go, but if you put me back in that environment, I'm going to get depressed again. And it would be important to know. And they said, well, we don't test that. And of course, they did get an FDA indication for that antidepressant. Well, later on, uh, there had been many challenges to the way these tests were done. So it wasn't just me sitting there thinking, gee, there's something wrong with this picture. It's not a complete picture. It's a a little snapshot. And there are studies that have came out uh, and peer-reviewed uh, evidence-based uh, journal articles about how uh, SSRIs manipulated statistical data versus clinical difference. So there's, there's a statistical difference and there's a clinical difference. And what they found was that when you looked at the clinical difference that you were approximating placebo. And so there was another PAN study done that was not, I don't believe this was a, a, a double a blind peer review study like, you know, we need to have for good science. But it was more of a, like a poll where people taking um, depressants uh, that were not in a controlled situation like inpatient but were outpatient who were prescribed antidepressants, SSRIs, and they asked them, how many of you are uh, not depressed because of taking this drug? And the result was 30%. And that's placebo. That's the same response as placebo. So what we started to see was that these earlier ideas that were questioning the statistical change in these placebo-controlled studies were actually manipulations and really weren't showing the true efficacy of some of the pharmacology that got FDA approval and that the FDA approval process was possibly flawed and nonetheless enabled uh, pharmacology uh, to make billions and billions of dollars off of consumers by treating symptoms that if you stop taking the drugs, the symptoms would reappear. 
So it, it definitely showed an efficacy, but it wasn't really curing anything. It wasn't curing people's depression. It was just treating the symptoms. So that's what we have. Now, in the FDA, there is a record of such. For every pharmacology that is approved by the FDA, there is a record of placebo. Now, placebo effect, being 30%, um, has been stigmatized and minimized uh, as some kind of freaky mind-body thing that happens and we get this effect. Um, however, when we start to look at really the global reach of the placebo effect that is documented in double-blind, peer-reviewed studies for every pharmacology that the FDA has approved. There is a placebo impact that had to be beaten by the drug of choice that got studied. And that means that for every condition there is that we get sick that we would need a pill for, there is a placebo effect that is documented in the FDA whether it's treating diabetes, whether it's treating depression, whether it's shrinking a cancerous tumor, regardless of what the malady is, there's been, for everything, every drug studied, there's a placebo effect of 30%. It's 25 to 30% across the board. Now, it's wonderful that we have pharmacology to treat things. We need pharmacology. We need a way to test and validate the efficacy of medication before it, it gets to us. We need to know that it's safe. We, we certainly need an FDA. But what's being ignored here is that people are demonstrating through evidence, through peer-reviewed evidence, that we can heal ourselves regardless of what the malady is. That for some reason, by enlisting people in studies like this, they have mobilized miraculously an ability to remit those conditions or symptoms by taking a sugar pill, which means basically they did it themselves. They remitted healing. They gave healing to themselves. And that's kind of a miracle. In some cases, I would say that it's, it's a miraculous thing. I think it's a miraculous thing that someone can switch off their addiction spontaneously without withdrawal. And I know several people who have done this. They were just done. They were fed up. They said, I'm done and I'm stopping. And they went cold turkey. And I'm talking about cigarettes, which have been, I, I've struggled to help people quit cigarette smoking. And I do EMDR for addiction, and I know alcoholics who have just stopped cold turkey. No withdrawal, both cases, no withdrawal. And they never picked up again. They were done. They switched it off all by themselves. Now, I can switch it off using EMDR, but these people did it without my help. And there are people who have come back from cancer because they decided that they no longer needed to suffer with cancer. And yes, they did take medications, but there's something else that switched in those people where they really came roaring back from cancer, from, from I'm talking about stage four cancer, where they were already um, written off by the medical community. There are miraculous instances where we've seen healing happen, but actually it's a common occurrence. Every drug study has a documentation of such miraculous healing through the placebo effect. And I feel that the placebo is um, presented 
in a stigma some stigmatized way it's it's stigmatized as something that is oh it's just placebo like it's insignificant and what i'm saying is that it's not insignificant i'm suggesting that this is a miraculous thing that's healing that's happening and that if we could manage that if we could research it if we could manage it we could all learn how to mobilize our own self-healing regardless of what our condition is that's a big big if that i'm suggesting here but i'm watching it happen and now with covid i get a lot of calls from people with covid and i do i have another video called flow i have about three of those videos now and this is a technique where we tap into our energy system and we run energy and we can change it at will what we want to flow we can we can flow whatever we want and what i did with those people was i asked them to flow healing energy for their symptoms for for whatever was however they were suffering and they did and i didn't do anything else but suggest and give them a pathway for that energy and what i witnessed was them channeling energy into themselves that started to immediately address their symptoms so that they were activating healing actively engaging in healing themselves right before my eyes and so here was a way that uh, an opportunity presented for them to step into that just as people were asked to be in clinical trials and they thought they were taking a pill that was going to have an effect is this a placebo effect i just don't like the word placebo now because it's stigmatized i think that we can heal ourselves and i don't want to call it placebo i think it's real i think what these people experienced is real i think they'll tell you that they feel better that they're doing better, that their life is changing. I think that we need to um, look at other opportunities. I'm not saying that I have the way. I'm not saying that flow is the way. I'm saying we need to look at this as a bigger issue and look at other ways that we can bring people into that path of self-healing. And if we do that, we're going to see outcomes that we'll call miraculous. And I think it's time that we go there. We're putting billions and billions of dollars into pharmacological research. We put zero research into this placebo effect. Why? Why? Because it won't make any money on anyone. It's, it's not going to cost any money. My flow video is up for free. Anyone can watch it. It's free of charge. There's no money to be made. I'm not making any money by doing this video. That's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because it's time for us to realize that we can heal ourselves. At least I believe I'm suggesting that we can heal ourselves. It's a suggestion that I'm making on this video. I don't have peer reviewed evidence. I don't have research to back this up. I'm admitting that because there isn't any. And there's no, no one willing to fund such research because it's not going to make money for anyone. Who's going to fund it? Big Pharma? I don't think so. So, um, so here's an idea I'm putting out there. I'm seeing evidence of this. I'm watching it. All the evidence we need is with the FDA. Um, what we need to do is maybe water these seeds and watch it grow. And maybe the time is now as people no longer can afford expensive medications, as medic, new medications coming out, the price is just astronomical. The profit margin they're making is huge. They don't have any reservations about that. And, you know, I'm not going to defend them and I'm not going to accuse them of anything. I think they have a right to make profit. All of us do. Um, but maybe we need to move to a new idea about healthcare in our country. And maybe we can give ourselves some credit for the abilities that we have innately. 
that our own ability to heal ourselves is already within us. Thanks for watching.